Hello, I am Stephanie Holland and I am here with Ridgewater College as the Recruitment and Retention Specialist specifically for our technical programs and I've put together a short presentation really with the intention of providing some background, um, resources, and different strategies for success as you go through your academic programs here at Ridgewater College. So um, I hope you find this useful and beneficial and at the end of the presentation as well my contact information will be listed. There are several ways to get in touch with me but um, my role here um, through student services is really to support and help our technical students as they're going through their programs and that can be really in a variety of different ways. Um, and a variety of different ways to reach out as well. So um, definitely get in touch and again my contact information and I'll go over that as well will be at the end of this presentation. So really what we're talking about today there's four sort of themes that I really like to highlight and talk about when I do this presentation to our online classes and when I've done this presentation on campus in front of students um, on, in on-ground classes as well. And so we really do want to talk about life. Um, I realize that sounds pretty broad, but as students, we oftentimes really need to think about our work, life, school balance and what that means and what that looks like. And obviously that's going to look different for everybody. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We also want to talk about resources on campus that are here to really support our students um, and again make sure that you are staying on track, staying on course to complete in a timeline that works well for you and just are aware of those things to really help you move through your programs to be academically successful and to reach your goals. We want to talk about strategies to be successful and also I'll have a few final thoughts as it pertains to programs, college, and just a lot of different things in general. So usually with this slide, I, I kind of keep it blank for a minute to encourage students to think about what does life and college look like for you? And it's going to look different for everybody. We all have different lives that we lead. We all have different things going on outside of college. And so really think about for a second before I transition um, to fill in the blanks about what does school look like for you, meaning what, it, what do you have going on outside of college that might impact school. So think about that for a second too. Like what other things do you have going on? Because I'm going to assume as I've said to other classes, that you aren't just focusing on school right now, meaning you've got a lot of other things going on. So what does that look like for you? And the most common themes, as I've done this presentation to different groups and different schools over the years, these are the most common themes that have come up for students. So most of our students do work in some capacity, whether that's a part-time job, a lot of our students work a full-time job and how do you marry all of those things together so how do you balance this workload that you've got but also balance it with your school courses that you've got going on and the expectation that comes with that and the academic rigor so how do you balance all of that together naturally most of us are probably going to have some family obligations whether that's children of our own or parents other family members, um, friends certainly, but there's a lot of obligation that comes with having our own families. And so really, again, trying to balance that expectation, uh, again, with the academic rigor and expectation that your college and your program is going to have as well. Another big theme that showcases itself often is money. Um, how do we afford going to school? What about loans? What about grants? What about scholarships? All those different kinds of things. How am I going to pay for books? And oftentimes, um, students need to work to be able to go to college. So again, that's a very, very common theme that we see and a very common concern. So again, thinking ahead to what the financial situation looks like, um, and it can change from semester to semester and even from year to year. So really being proactive and thinking about um, the financial situation and what resources are out there to help you get through that 
and what resources on campus can maybe um, support that and where you can ask those questions too. Scheduling is also a really big concern and what I mean by that oftentimes is some of it's time management wherein how can you schedule out your day or schedule out your week so that you're able to get all the things done that you need to get done again both for your school and your program but also for all of those outside obligations as well. And alongside that scheduling really comes down to two how are you going to schedule your classes can you only take classes monday wednesday friday can you only take online classes uh, can you only take morning classes and really thinking about that and being intentional about creating a schedule that's going to be supportive to you and again all these other things that you've got going on so that you can really focus and hone in on your classes when you need to and something to think about too, and I, I really want to underscore this point, is a lot of students think, well, I'm just going to take classes online because it's easier, because it's more flexible. And I just want to be transparent for students who are listening to this online or thinking about online classes. It's not always, quote unquote, the easy way out. You know, online classes have a huge amount of academic rigor and expectation, and it's definitely not... Um, easier than taking taking a class on ground and sometimes I think that can be a misconception about online or that students think well I can take a full credit load of online classes and take a full you know work my full-time job and so just in the spirit of transparency just know that um, online classes obviously offer a lot of flexibility but the academic rigor oftentimes is certainly the same if not a little bit more heightened just because you don't have a lot of the benefit um, of discussion and um, those things that you would in an on-ground class. Not to say it doesn't exist, but it's just a different way, different way of doing it. So online uh, definitely has advantages. Um, but, but again, just think about the differences between on-ground and online learning and what works best for you, um, you know, understanding the rigor and all of those things too. Our support systems are hugely important, I think, when it comes to our academic success and kind of what we're able to commit to. Um, I've worked with students in the past whose families or partners or whomever isn't really supportive or doesn't understand why they're going to college. And oftentimes I think that can be very, very challenging because we all need our support systems to kind of be, be on our side and and help us through when things get stressful. And so if our support systems maybe don't totally understand our goals, um, that can present a, a different set of challenges as well. And other things too, like transportation, housing, um, you know, all those different things just on a day-to-day -day basis that we really have to think about and focus on can definitely feel heavy at times if we don't have plans in place. So again, the purpose of this slide is just to really showcase how complicated sometimes our lives can get and how many layers of things that we really have to think about. And again, how do we get those things to work together to really support our academic and long-term educational goals? And the one I have at the bottom there, ourselves, I have that in bold and you'll notice it's in capital letters because I've worked in higher education for about 13 years and more often than not, I find it's ourselves who can easily make or break our academic decisions and goals um, more than anything else. And that's not to say that life doesn't happen. It certainly does. And we can absolutely never predict to 100% um, degree what could happen. You know, cars break down and family things come up for sure. But more often than not, I have found it's ourselves that really kind of get in the way of our own success sometimes. Um, you know, I, a story I tell often is I worked with a student years ago and they were very interested in a nursing program. And as I was talking to them about the nursing program and all the different details, throughout that hour long conversation, I could hear themselves talking themselves out of going for that, even though that was their lifelong dream, it would be a career change, it would offer a lot more, I think, stability and long-term, um, you know, just long-term benefit down the road, but I could just sort of hear the fear and see them talking themselves out of it, and I understand that can be natural sometimes, but 
but I think we need to kind of keep our eyes on the prize and really maintain focus as it comes to really what our long-term goals are and really try to look for solutions to how to get there, maybe instead of sort of building some, some roadblocks. So, and again, life happens, we get it. And that's why we really want to make sure that students are aware of the resources on campus to help support you as you go through your programs and really what each of these um, these different departments is. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these and this certainly is not a comprehensive list. There are definitely more programs, um, offices, departments besides what's listed here on this slide that can help students uh, as they're going through their program. So academic advising is a really big one and oftentimes students um, will meet with academic advisors really to kind of plan out their first semester if not their first year. And so really it's just a matter of talking about your program and your long-term goals, maybe things that you're interested in so that we can help match up some classes. Um, if there's a little more flexibility to your schedule, again, with technical programs, oftentimes um, there's a pretty regimented and specific list of courses that need to be taken. But if there are any electives or for students who might be going into more of a transfer side by getting their quote unquote gen eds done, there's a little more flexibility. So academic and faculty advisors can absolutely help um, with those questions and really make sure that you are taking the classes that you need to take, both for your degree requirements to graduate, but also, again, for your long-term educational and career goals. We also have counselors on both campuses here in Wilmer and in Hutchinson. And our counselors can really offer a wide variety of resources. A lot of students will talk to our counselors because they really just don't know what they want to be doing. Maybe they've been taking classes for this semester and it's just not what's right for them. It's not the program that they want to be doing after all. So how can we really hone in on um, what you really want to be doing or the program or career that's really right for you. And so a little bit of that career counseling oftentimes comes into play. But beyond that, also personal counseling. I mean, again, life happens and sometimes there are stretches where it, you know, we all just feel a little bit not ourselves or things come up or or things just feel really heavy and we're just not sure of the tools that we can access to to kind of get through some of those rough patches and so our counselors are amazing resources to help sift through some of those things um, help get a plan in place and really just help again hone in on some things to make sure that you're able to get through the semester the year the week sometimes maybe even just to get through the day, um, but to also make sure that we don't get derailed and lose sight of our long-term goals of getting through our programs. <clears throat> Financial aid is also another great resource. These are staff on campus who can help, help answer questions about grants, about loan eligibility, about what all of that means, about how much to take out, um, different resources in that capacity as well. So um, definitely reach out to our financial aid representatives on both campuses if you have any questions about what your financial aid package looks like or could look like or any questions um, as, a, as it relates to paying for college. Of course, we have libraries on both campuses as well, and those are stocked with a lot of different resources, um, you know, books, and I mean, that probably goes without saying, but computers and just a lot of different resources too um, that students may need to access at any given point. We also have our academic support center, which is housed within the libraries, and basically those are, um, you know, Ridgewater employees staff to help with um, with certain academic support by way of of helping with study guides or helping um, you know learn how to take notes or helping revise papers and things of that nature so we do have staff who are employed in the academic support center with that role in mind to really help with a variety of different academic needs that any student might bring to them. But we also have peer tutors on both campuses as well. And so peer tutors are students just like you who um, may may just be doing well in a certain discipline and so they will um, have a, a varied um, and flexible schedule and they're, they're housed in the library as well, the academic support center. Um, again, and peer tutors who are taking classes just like you, but um, maybe help be able to help answer some basic and specific questions as it pertains to, again, a wide variety of classes. 
We also have disability resources. So for students who maybe had an IEP or something in high school that allowed them some accommodations for classes, maybe for test taking, that is something that does not automatically transfer from the high school level. So if that is something that students are interested in benefiting from, you would need to seek out those resources, set up an appointment, um, with the disability resources person on either campus and make sure that you are getting those things established and set for yourself. And again, if, if that's something that you benefited from in high school, it might be something worth exploring to help you um, help you at college as well. So definitely something to remember and a lot of students um, are able to meet with our with our staff on campuses and and really start that process of getting some accommodations in place. TRIO programs, those are programs that really work with um, kind of a specific population of student. It does require an application, but it's a pretty short application process, I believe. And it's basically just a lot of specialized services as it pertains to those students. So again, it's students who maybe are, are first generation, students with disabilities, students from maybe um, a different socioeconomic background and things of that nature. But again, it really affords those students a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, more personalized attention and resources. So it's an amazing program um, that a lot of students are able to take advantage of. But I would definitely recommend if you feel that's something you may benefit from to reach out um, to the staff on the campuses who, who work in those departments. And again, all of these folks can be found by visiting ridgewater.edu and there is a contact us button in the top right hand corner and, and that by using that and just searching by department or searching by name, you can certainly look up staff and or faculty if you need to get in touch with them and, and aren't sure where to start. Veteran services, also on both campuses, um, that might be explanatory just in, in the name, but um, we do have a veteran military population on both campuses, and so we do have um, staff who, who work with our veteran population as well and just answering questions about maybe how their GI Bill or different benefits that they received from their military service might work um, with their educational goals as well. Again, testing resources, our bookstore. Um, again, that might be self-explanatory where you get your, your books for class, different resources, snacks, um, different kinds of things. Student life. And this is a pretty big one too. There are a variety of clubs and organizations across both campuses really to get involved in or to really just take advantage of the fun things that they plan um, on a weekly basis. There's usually a lot going on on both campuses in student life. But clubs and organizations are, are really good places to really, again, start developing um, some leadership skills, to start developing some networking opportunities. I mean, we just never know where mm -hmm. where connections might be made or where where you might be able to start networking again for your, for your career goals. Um, and so clubs and orgs are a really good way to kind of start mastering a little bit of those, those leadership skills, involvement, and getting to know your colleagues and other people, and oftentimes across different departments too. So really establishing and making some of those connections that, that oftentimes I think students find benefit them long term. The foundation as well, and oftentimes when I reference the foundation with students, it's to really reference and make sure students know about scholarship opportunities. So usually twice a year, I want to say in October and probably sometime in February or March. Um, and again, that, that might change a little bit year to year, but scholarships are due. And in my opinion and my experience, scholarships are one of the most underutilized resources for students to pay for college. And one thing you may or might not know about scholarships is it's basically free money. And so it does not need to be paid back. Um, and so it's definitely a resource I encourage students to think about, to access, to utilize, to ask questions about, because Ridgewater's application process is actually pretty streamlined. You submit one application. It might take an hour to pull some different resources together um, to, to finalize your application. 
but it's one application process and that gets you in the running for a variety of different scholarship opportunities. So it's a pretty streamlined and simplified process. And again, a very underutilized resource, uh, really in general, not just here at Ridgewater, but really in general, I find that's something either students don't know about, are unsure about, don't know the processes, or feel they don't have time to invest in it. But I would encourage you to spend an hour applying for scholarships, you know, once or twice a year, and the long-term financial benefit could really, really showcase itself. Again, it's free money, and it's there to support you as you go through your programs. And last but not least, I also list myself as a resource on campus. So I am, again, I'm Stephanie, and I'm newer to the campus. I It is uh, October 2019 right now, and I've only been here since March. But my position, again, is really to help ensure students feel connected to resources on campus and to really help alleviate if not remove completely but help alleviate or soften some barriers that students may be experiencing as they're going through college um, that would prevent them from completing their programs again you're spending a lot of time and money investing in your academic and career goal futures we want to make sure you get to the finish line as uninterrupted and as seamlessly as possible. And so you might hear from me before I hear from you, and that's okay. But sometimes faculty might reach out to me if they notice a student is struggling or if they haven't heard from a student in a while. And that's where I may get involved as well to just help support whatever's going on and to help strategize and try to soften or remove barriers that students are experiencing. So if you do hear from me, don't worry, um, but definitely reach back if we reach out because we can't help if we don't know what's going on. So if you do hear from me, definitely be sure to reach out. So different strategies for success transitioning onto this as well. Um, again, some of this might be stuff that you already know, but I definitely think some of these things are worth repeating. I will go into these a little bit of detail. So know what your limits are. Again, we talked a little bit before about um, a lot of students who work full time and have families and go to school full time. That might present a different set of challenges. So understand what your limits are, understand what life looks like, but remember what your goals are. You know, again, you're investing time into this. So even if things feel bumpy and tough, remember what your long term goals are. Time management, again, this might seem so obvious, but I think it bears repeating because that can be a challenge for a lot of us. But really getting into a rhythm and allowing yourself to get into a rhythm. You know, oftentimes they say it takes 30 days, give or take, to get into a new routine and to kind of feel comfortable with that. So just like starting a new job or starting anything new, when you start school, it's going to take a little bit of time to get into a rhythm that feels comfortable. So if you have a commute, if it's a new commute, understanding how long it's going to take to get to campus. If you have a favorite coffee shop you want to stop at along the way, it might take you a minute to identify that coffee shop uh, but really getting into a rhythm and a schedule is really going to be essential um, for long-term academic success and again we've talked about this a couple different times in a few different ways but really really understand what your commitments are outside of school so what does work look like what does family situation look like so that you can be realistic about the number of credits you want to take any given semester and again this is really with your long-term academic success in mind and so really working with advisors and counselors or myself or your faculty to set up a schedule that's really going to work the best for you. And that's probably going to look different than anybody else's. So again, we're all a little bit different. Don't procrastinate. That might, again, seem like an obvious statement, but um, oftentimes students get stressed out and feel more challenged if they put off bigger things. So try to stay on a schedule, stay on a timeline, and try not to put things off till the last minute. To complete utilize those campus resources so again the library those academic support staff your faculty your amazing faculty um, staff advisors etc we are all here because of you and for you and so we really want to make sure students know who we are where we are how we can help you 
and and definitely utilize us because we are here for you and oftentimes I think too either just because of um, you know maybe visibility or whatever reasons but I think sometimes um, students maybe just don't know who to contact and so um, you know it's really a matter of identifying who some of these resources are and where where to go for them stay the course that might sound like a pretty funny pun but um, you know again I've said it you know once you start this I think it's very important not to what's the term that's used a lot these days um, to ghost I guess I've been using that quite a bit lately but but stay the course um, you know there can be long-term academic and financial considerations to think of so so if something's not working out or if a class isn't working out please reach out to faculty or if we're reaching out to you please reach back because you know sometimes we see students who just stop coming to class or stop responding to communication and that's really something we want to encourage you not to do because if we are reaching out it's really really for a purpose and because we want you to be aware of of things and maybe of what the academic or financial um, considerations could be so again you're spending a lot of time and money to be here we want to make sure that you're staying the course and, and just want to make sure that you understand kind of how this all works together and what everything means. And so uh, I'm really making sure that you do that by asking questions, either of your faculty, your classmates, or staff. Again, we're all here for the same purpose, and that's really to help you through these programs. And so, you know, as much as I would love to be a mind reader in many situations, as I imagine faculty would be too, we can't help if we don't know what's going on and so that doesn't mean you need to share everything personally or professionally that's happening but we can't help in the ways that we want to again so you can stay on track if we don't know what's going on or if our communication goes unresponded to so if we're reaching out please reach back because there's usually a really really good reason that we are texting you or emailing or calling so again, please don't ghost and please respond if, we, if we're trying to get in touch with you. So final thoughts, um, and these are just kind of the five things that I feel are probably the most important to just remember and to kind of keep, keep tabs on as you're going through. But it's very easy, I think, oftentimes when we are in classes with, uh, with our peers to compare ourselves to others. If we see somebody get done with a test in 15 minutes and we're only on the second question, oftentimes I think that can, can really be a little bit panic-inducing. But please remember that there is not a one-size-fits-all method to learning, to test-taking, to writing papers. You need to figure out the system and the method and the resources and the tools that work best for you. And I guarantee if you're sitting in a class or if you're in an online class and you look around, every one of your classmates learns differently has a different style, needs different supports and resources than you, and that's okay. So as much as I try to encourage students not to, try not to compare yourself with your classmates. You know, we all have different sets of skills and things that we need, and so it might, what's working for one person might not work the best for another. So just remember, there's just not a one-size-fits-all method to, to any of this. And finding what works for you um, will will really be uh, beneficial long term. College is a commitment. Uh, I've said this a couple times too. It's a financial commitment. It is a time commitment. And so we really want students to take it seriously. You're paying for these classes. We want you to be successful. Um, so please keep that in mind as you're getting started with things, as you're halfway through, and as you're nearing the end of the semester. It is a commitment. It's going to take time. It takes financial resources. So um, you know there there is a time investment that we that we do expect out of our students. Be proactive. Again, get things done on time. Ask for help. Um, again, we can't help in the ways that we really want to if we don't know what's going on. So be sure to reach out if things come up as things bubble up so that we can get ahead of things and if not remove barriers completely we definitely want to try to help soften those and like anything the last point what you put into college is totally related to what you're going to get out of it and that's really like anything that we do in life so we want you and expect you to work hard and do good things and get involved and have fun because you're here for a reason and a lot of these programs are really hands-on and they're so much fun and the faculty are so passionate 
And I just think so many of these classrooms are just so engaging and so much fun. But we also expect you to match that as well. So put a lot of hard work, have a good attitude, have good energy coming into it, and you're gonna, the rewards will show themselves. So lastly, again, my name is Stephanie Holland. I am the Recruitment and Retention Specialist, uh, really focusing on our technical programs, and you can reach me in a variety of different ways. My office in at the Wilmer campus is in the student services sections. When I'm in Hutchinson, I'm kind of all over the place, but oftentimes you can find me in the Commons area. You can also call my office listed there. Uh, my text number is a little bit different, but you can text me as well. And then, of course, my email. So there are a variety of different ways to get in touch with me. And there are also a variety of different ways I might try to get in touch with you, too. So, again, if faculty reach out, um, you know, you might hear from me, from me, too. And one thing, too, just kind of a final thought. This is a lot of information in about 15 minutes. I guess I don't have a clock, but about 15 minutes to go through. It's a lot of information as you go through orientation. It's a lot of information in your first few weeks. So what I always tell students is if you have a question, if you have a concern, if you're just feeling a little bit anxious about this whole process and you have no idea where to start, start with me. I don't pretend to have all the answers to all the questions. But I'm not afraid to ask on your behalf or to help connect the dots. So if you really need something, if you're really struggling with something and you just don't know the resource to ask or to seek out, please start with me and we'll do some research together. So, um, And I mean that. I, I don't want students to feel like they're falling behind or if they just don't know where to go. So please come find me, text me, find me in my office, um, send me an email. I'm always happy to meet um, or if it doesn't uh, work to meet, we can always chat over the phone. So again, look forward to connecting with all of you and wish you all the best in your academic and professional successes as you go through your programs here at Ridgewater. Welcome.